Welcome to the Believe Podcast Network, SoCal Sweat. My name is Ann McDaniels, a former NFL cheerleader and product manager turned actress and model who dreams of being a UFC fighter. Meow. Learning strategies to help motivate others leads me to bring you interviews each week from a range of athletes, experts in fitness and nutrition, and so much more. Thanks for listening to Believe, the number one podcast for working professionals, and let's push our endorphins to higher performance through SoCal Sweat. This is your host, Ann McDaniels, and welcome to another episode of Believe SoCal Sweat. Today's going to be a really short podcast. I get a lot of questions on how many calories should I burn? What exercises burn the most calories? Is it really important? Well, I'm just going to go over a few things about calories burned and how effective they may or may not be on your body. And in my research for this podcast, I stumbled upon an article written by a personal trainer and her name is Stephanie Mansour. And she talks about all of her clients and what they come to her with as far as questions. And one question that pops up all the time is, should I worry about how many calories I burn during my workout? And she said with the popularity of fitness trackers and at-home fitness equipment like treadmills and stationary bikes, the number of calories you burn during each workout is front and center. And a lot of these things actually, when they come up on the computer or when they come up on your Apple up your, on your Apple watch or even on the treadmill or elliptical itself, a lot of these are not accurate. So people kind of plan their lives and like, oh my God, I can't believe I only burn this many calories or I burn this many and you actually didn't. So how important is this metric and is it something you should really pay attention to? And does it matter how many calories people burn during a workout? And Stephanie says she tells her clients, while calories are interesting to note, they're not the sole indicator of how effective a workout is. She said that she prefers people to focus on how they feel during the workout. Do you feel winded? Have you broken a sweat? Do you feel like you're making progress in the long term with endurance and strength? You have to look at your own goals. And these things are more indicative of how effective your workout is than the actual calorie burn. So think about it, when you get on a treadmill or elliptical or you're looking at your, at your tracker, sometimes people just slave away at something that they really don't enjoy at all just because they're burning calories. But it's more effective if you do what you enjoy. And also it's better on the body because if you're pounding your legs and you're feeling sore but just because you're burning calories, then that's just really kind of goes against the purpose. And what exercise burns the most calories? This is something that a lot of people ask all the time. And kind of gone are the days of the strict calories in, calories out methodology. For weight loss and specifically for women with hormonal issues or weight challenges, that school of thought does not always yield the desired results. With that being said, the American Council on Exercise weighs in on the top five. If someone weighs 150 pounds, what would burn the most amount of calories? Um, number one is 30 minutes of walking. And this is again for someone who weighs 150 50 pounds would burn during the following exercises. So you really have to take in, if you do a 30 minutes, depending on your like BMI or your weight, it's all a little bit different. But in general, for a 150 pound person, 30 minutes of walking at a moderate pace burns 112 calories. 30 minutes of weight training burns 102 calories. 30 minutes of running is 238. 30 minutes of yoga is 85. And 30 minutes of spinning at a moderate pace is 136. So that's kind of an indicator of maybe where you want to go, what do you enjoy. And you can't let calories trump how your body feels. So for example, if someone listens to this podcast and they hear the amount of calories burned in yoga versus spinning or running, that person who really enjoys yoga may instead ditch that yoga class for a spin class and force themselves to run instead of walk. But then they don't even, they don't even enjoy it. How many calories we burn doesn't reflect what our body needs. Yes, you can hop on your spin bike and burn more calories than a yoga class, but you'll be foregoing flexibility, toning, and mental health benefits that your body may be craving. The best workout plan is one that makes you feel good. And this trainer never recommends sacrificing that's just for the sake of burning more calories. She encourages her clients to feel empowered and to tap into what their bodies need. Maybe instead they want to go to a dance class or maybe just do some, some meditation and then go for a walk around the block just because they're feeling okay, maybe not, not great that day. And just because they had a hamburger, they force themselves to go to the spin class and may, may injure themselves. 
listen to what your bodies actually need. One day that may be a leisurely walk, and then the next day it would be an intense spin class. Listen to your body. And both are solid workout choices no matter what, because you're moving your body and you're getting up and you're getting out. It's also a good mental health, you know, booster. Um, how about using calories burned as motivation? Now, just like when people take daily steps, setting a calorie burn goal can turn your exercise game and motivate you to get into get moving. And that helps for a lot of people. However, the number of calories you want to burn through exercise will vary based on your diet, your body composition, and your goals. If you're trying to lose weight, maybe you're trying to improve endurance, think about what your own goals are. So if you're going to closely monitor your calorie burn and aim to hit a certain number, Stephanie does suggest working with a trainer to determine what a, what a healthy calorie burn goal is for you specifically. She also warns against becoming hyper-focused on calories. This can actually spiral into an unhealthy relationship with food and exercise. So if tracking calories burned is fun for you and you look at it as a, as a challenge, that's great. But if it becomes another stressor or you find yourself feeling discouraged when you don't burn a certain amount, ditch it. Some people, people can become so overly obsessed. Um, people in my own family do this and it's quite discouraging. And it, even though they go to the gym maybe twice a day, then they'll go shovel snow or go mow the lawn. And, just because they haven't burned in the beginning the amount of calories they want. So just again, listen to your body. Every day is different and try to keep it to um, just something that is realistic and that can help you long-term because you don't want to hurt your bone density. You don't want to hurt your metabolism and you want to enjoy everything. You want to, you want to, you'll do what you love. You'll stick to what you love. And then ask yourself, are you reaching your fitness goals? Am I reaching my fitness goals? This is the main question that this trainer always asks. Do you feel like your workout routine is helping you reach your goals? Well, calories are only one way to track the effectiveness of a workout. If you are seeing results on the scale, your clothes fit better or your energy levels and sleep have improved and you feel strong, energized, and sexy, these are the most important things and signs that your workouts are working for you. Don't move from one thing to the next just because you feel as if it's gonna burn more calories. You want to do what works for you. You'll stick with what you love. However, if you are someone that overeats and you're looking at calories burned in order for a way to track your fitness goals and lose weight and feel better, tracking how many calories you burn can be helpful in getting and becoming more aware of how you feel, fuel and move your body. So it is a good indicator if you're trying to do that. And having a general sense of how many calories you are burning when moving your body is great. But do remember that it's only one measure of a workout intensity and effectiveness and shouldn't be the end all be all when it comes to rating a workout or choosing which type of exercise to do. And for a well-rounded workout routine, focus on how your body feels and the progress you're making towards your goals over time. It's a much healthier approach. So everything in moderation, do what you love, eat what you love and that is healthy, and try to maintain a good balance because life is too short. We want to stay healthy, but we want to have fun and enjoy life. And again, this research comes from Stephanie Mansour, who is a personal trainer and helped, helped um, contribute to this podcast. So thank you so much for listening. I hope some of these things helped you in maintaining your, your fitness goals and enjoying life. And maybe hopefully some of these things broke down some questions for you. Anyway, I appreciate you again so much for joining me on another episode of Believe Silk Hell Sweat, and I wish you guys all a wonderful week. Thank you. We appreciate you for listening, and please rate and subscribe to the show on iTunes. You can also listen on Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, Luminary Tuned In, or at Believe.com. You can reach out to me for any questions or topics you'd like covered on the show at Anne McDaniels or at Anne McDaniels Actress. And I will see you next time on Believe Silk Hell Sweat. Thank you.